So, you want to learn how to do Logi in Foxhole? Well, welcome to the complete-ish Foxhole Logi guide. After watching this video, you should be a Logi god, supplying your comrades and looking cool while you do it. If that is not the case, you can call me bad names in the comments. There will be timestamps in the description to help you navigate the video. And there will also be text that further explains stuff that I'll be explicitly leaving out to make this video a little bit shorter, so feel free to pause and read that. Anyway, let's get started. You can start doing logic with the starting equipment, but if possible, get a sledgehammer. It will make gathering resources faster. If you're heading into an area with enemy activity, a weapon could be useful but it is not required. But a radio is most definitely required. It will help you map a safe route so you can arrive to your destination without bullet holes in your truck. Somebody's shooting some. Now to do any type of logi, you'll need a vehicle. I've made a video on how to get a vehicle before, but I'll be explaining it in this video again. So there are three ways of getting a vehicle. Make it, steal it, or get it from storage. To make one, you'll have to find a vehicle factory. Just look for a truck icon on the map and go there. Once there, press E to open it. Usually players put BMATs in these to make it easier for their comrades to build new vehicles, but if there aren't any, you're going to have to get some. You can find some at the building you spawned at, or by visiting a refinery, marked as a hammer on the map. After you have your BMATs, you can start to look what type of vehicle you want. Technically, you can do Logi with any vehicle, but some are more efficient than others. As a new player, I would advise you get a basic truck. These are the most flexible with what they can carry and the easiest to use. By hovering over any icon, you can see how much BMATs they cost. Some will cost R mats, but for a basic truck, 100 BMATs is enough to get you started. Click on the vehicle and then hold left click on the blueprint. After the necessary amount of materials is added to your blueprint, it will become real. Enter the vehicle by pressing Q and drive out the building. If your vehicle isn't moving, don't panic, you're just in the passenger seat. Press W to switch. You can also steal vehicles if you don't want to build one. This method should be used more often because, well, there's a lot of unused trucks hanging around. You'll need a wrench to do this. Go to a vehicle, preferably one that is not occupied, then go ahead and crouch down next to it. Press left click with your wrench in your hand, and after a few seconds, it'll unlock the vehicle. Make sure you can put stuff inside it by standing next to it and pressing E. Sometimes vehicles are squad locked. This forbids you from messing with its inventory, but you can still drive with it. And in the case of Logi, you kind of have to be able to mess with the inventory. Now go ahead and press L to lock your vehicle to forbid any other player to interact with it. Oh, and the last method is probably the most unutilized method of them all. Just head to a storage depot and get a vehicle from there by clicking on the one you want. Now that you have your vehicle, don't just drive off to the countryside. You'll need to fill up your fuel tank first. Usually players will park fuel trucks close to vehicle factories. Park your vehicle close to it, then open its inventory and press the refuel button. Hop back in, wait for your fuel bar to fill up, and after that you can drive off. If there are no fuel trucks, open up your map and hover over some icons until you find fuel listed in their inventories. Go there and get it. Then fill up your vehicle by left clicking with the fuel equipped. Now we can start with resource gathering. 
As a beginner, I advise you to start gathering salvage first. To find salvage, open up your map and look for a salvage field. Salvage fields are the screw icon. By hovering over it, you'll be shown the current amount of salvage nodes available. When this number hits zero, it'll take up to 80 to 140 minutes to replenish it. After finding a suitable salvage field, drive there. To mine the salvage, you'll need to hit a node with your hammer or sledgehammer. In the bottom left, you'll get the number of salvage that you pick up. Sometimes you can find aluminium or iron nodes hiding in between the salvage nodes. These are used in research and prototype kits. They are important materials, so don't leave them behind. After you have completely filled your truck, drive to a refinery. They are the hammer icons on the map. Once you're at a refinery, press E to enter, and you'll be greeted with the screen. The middle tab is the most important one. This is where you turn the raw materials that you gathered into refined materials. For salvage, we have three options. And the numbers on the arrows tell you how much salvage is required to make one of those. Left click on the salvage icon and it will take some salvage and turn it into the refined material. Shift left clicking the salvage icon will take all available salvage and refine it. Left click on the refined material to put it in your inventory, but if you don't want these materials, you can turn your refinement into a public action. The refinery will no longer hold on to your refined materials and put them directly in its stockpile. And there you have it, you've done your first Logi run. I am proud of you, but now that you can gather raw materials and refine them, you'll need to know how to use these materials to make equipment and weapons. Quick note however, B-mats are also used in building, so everything you see that is built up by players is um, at some point has at some point required B-mats. Some of these structures require other materials, but most of the structures will require B-mats. So just supplying B-mats to a front is an option that you can do as well. where you can produce weapons, tools, ammunition, medical supplies and base supplies by using the materials that you just refined. But before you start producing these items, you'll need to know what to make. Now you could just make some random stuff and put them in the storage depot, but if you want to supply a frontline by yourself, you'll need to know what they need and what they could use. Open up your map and look for a frontline, hover over the base icons and figure out what supplies they are lacking. Players can also put map posts on the map that will help you decide what to bring them. Now some important items that every front needs are shirts, G supplies, weapons, ammo and B mats. These are the bare necessities a front needs to hold on. Of course they could use medical supplies, tools, explosives, fuels etc. But always check for these five first. Once you've decided where and what to bring, go ahead and click on an item. Note that you are making crates of the selected item and not individual items. By hovering over an icon you can see how much one crate holds. These vary from item to item. It will be put on the right panel. Here you can see there is a production line for each corresponding category. You can mix and match different items from the same category but you can only go up to 4 items per production line. At the very bottom you'll be able to see the total amount of time and resources required to make everything you've selected. Of course if you don't have the required materials you won't be able to start producing them. To start the production go ahead and click the start button. If you've made a mistake you can click on the red X to cancel your request. If you don't have time to finish your haul you can always make everything public and the items will be placed in the factory's inventory on completion. Once your request is complete, you can hit the green check to receive the items. Oh, and while you're waiting for your items, don't just hang around, go do something. But if you don't want to do something, don't wait in front of the factory. You want to keep the factory clear so you don't block other players.
Before you head out on your journey, make sure you have enough fuel and a radio. The radio will give you the most accurate information of the world map. Look at the roads heading to your destination. If you see blue dots, those are warden soldiers, and the green dots are colonial soldiers. Make sure no enemy dots are close to the roads you want to take. If they are occupying a road that you wanted to take, it is best to take a detour. Make sure to check your map regularly, but when you do so, make sure you are in a secure location. Your comrades will have built up radio towers along the roads. If a road has no radio towers, I would advise not to take it, but ultimately you'll have to decide that on your own. You want to get to your destination as fast as possible, but you also want to actually arrive at your destination. Players will make map posts warning you about unsafe roads, and they will also warn you in chat. Players who target Logi players are known as partisans. Their mission is to disrupt Logi lines so the front line can push up. So if there is an area with heavy partisan activity, make sure to keep an eye out. Now if you do get caught by enemy forces, don't panic. Make a map post and warn other players in chat. Don't be frustrated, this is a part of the game. If you're angry, that's normal. Take some time to cool off and start all over again. Got it. Got a truck. Got a... Dude, it's a truck full of... Uh, um... Where? Look, at, look at it, we gotta transport this. Go. Now if that doesn't happen and you arrive at your destination, go ahead and put all the crates in the base and then hit submit. I would advise to leave your BMATs in the base's inventory and not to submit them. This makes it easier for builders to take the BMATs. After the submission you might get some commands, depending on how many players are using that particular base as their spawn. But we don't do logi for the commands, we do logi so we can win the war. Now with everything you've learned you'll be able to do logi on your own or in groups. But to be an effective logi player you'll have to focus on cutting down the time you are waiting. Now how do you do that? Well with planning. Start with looking for a refinery. Then look for a salvage field near it. Then look for a front you want to supply. And look if there is a factory nearby. If not take the closest factory to it. With these travel points mapped out, you can start doing stuff in a loop. So start with gathering raw resources, then refine them. While they are refining, go get more raw resources, then refine those. If the front needs BMATs, deliver some. Then head back for some more raw resources. Refine them. If the front needs shirts, go to the factory with your refined resources. While the factory produces these, get more raw resources. Again, refine them, head to the factory, pick up your order and start a new one. And keep following this loop. Also keep checking the map for enemy positions and keep an eye out on the needs of the front. Your loop should not be set in stone. You'll have to switch to different salvage fields and fronts. Keep it dynamic and just have fun with it. And sadly, this is the end of the video. With this knowledge, you should be a logi god. I was going to add how to use cranes and such, but I've already spent way too long making this video, so that will be um, explained in a separate video. Hopefully this video helped you a little. If it did, or if you just enjoyed it, consider leaving a like and or a comment, and maybe even subscribing and hitting that bell. And I sincerely hope you have some fun times doing logi. I've been Creepy Banana, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.